The truth is the truth. No matter how you see it, no matter how you feel, the truth is the truth. Thank you so much for liking your comments and subscribing to the channel. Please share this with your friends. Smash that like button. Smash the subscription bell. Share this with everybody you know. We're trying to make sure people understand that they're not victims. That they are empowered for greatness. And all this stuff that's out here that's telling them otherwise is false and will not benefit them in the end. So please, I appreciate that. Share that. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. When Pilate was confronting Jesus and questioning him, interrogating him before deciding whether or not to crucify him, he asked him, what is truth? But if Pilate had the Bible, he would have found that in John 17, in the 17th verse, while he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, sanctify them in your truth, God's truth, your word is truth. We live in a post-truth society. Everybody's speaking their truth, so to speak, but they're speaking their truth and not the truth. And the problem is that in a society that has divorced itself from the word of God, that has divorced itself from the standard that God has set, then everyone's truth is all relative. My truth is relative to your truth. What I feel is what I consider my truth. See, it's not truth. See, what people need to understand, when people use this, and, and these, these terms, these are cultural Marxist terms. Speak your truth. Express your truth. These are cultural Marxist terms. They're satanic. Aleister Crowley, do what thou wilt. That is satanic. That is everybody doing their own thing. And no one is living their lives according to the standard that the creator, God Almighty, Yahweh, has established. And so therefore, everyone's running around speaking, quote unquote, their feelings, not their truth. These are your feelings. And I say that because recently, during a homecoming game in Burlington, Vermont, there was a drag show. I think it's important that someone has to do it. Burlington senior Dylan Bassett performing in drag for the very first time Friday. It's a cool opportunity. It probably won't happen, like may happen in my lifetime, but it's a really good experience for me. A first of its kind halftime show for the Burlington High School homecoming football game. A drag ball hosted by the Gay Street Alliance Club. To include the LGBTQ community um, in a sport that has traditionally been very masculine, it's really good for us to be able to add um, kind of a gender-bending aspect to that. BHS students, along with students from South Burlington and Winooski, creating their own persona and performing for a packed crowd. I think that the LGBTQ community has been looking for a way to kind of make themselves um, a little bit more part of BHS life. It's been on the back burner for a little while, and so we're trying to make it more of a pertinent issue and topic that's in the spotlight. School administrators proud of how their students have come together and the allyship they've shown each other, especially after a recent incident of racism at a girls' volleyball game. A lot of that is being tied into to this, which is excellent. I think it's uh, taking the power back from some of those contrarian mindsets. The decision to host the ball, a no-brainer for athletic director Karan Pinkney. Be okay with being your authentic self, you know, speaking your truth, living your truth. You know, you have plenty of allyship and support behind you. Whose idea was for the show to happen during homecoming. Pinkney hoping this is the first of many more inclusive ideas. We have a diverse community and not just in population, but in thoughts and action as well, too. And this is just one step in many steps that I hope that we can take uh, to show that. Drag queens were the halftime show. Now, like I've said before, and I've stated numerous times, I love everybody. I'm not attacking anyone in particular, but what I'm telling you is this, there is an attack on the traditional family, it is strategic, it is intentional because it's satanic and is using race and is using gender 
to perpetuate or is using race and is using gender to isolate, divide, and conquer us. There is race is an idol, gender is a cult. Or you can put it like this. Gender identity has now become the, the religion of the day. If you don't adhere to gender identity, if you don't adhere to what somebody feels, then you are in violation of that religion. You are considered a heretic. You are considered someone who is speaking things that are contrary to the gospel of gender identity. Sacrilegious. You're an outcast. You have to be canceled because you are coming against the religion of gender identity. And see, the problem is they have wrapped this gender identity cult, this gender ide identity religion, this wokeness. They've wrapped it in blackness so that it's more palatable for people to accept. They've wrapped it in blackness and they've used black people as the spokespeople for it. This particular homecoming drag queen performance was endorsed and promoted by the black athletic director in Burlington, Vermont, because you can't question him because if someone would have said something to him, he could accuse him of being racist and sexist. That's the double whammy. That's two strikes. And people don't want to be accused of that, especially Christians. Christians have become so meek that they've retreated into the shadows and they've allowed these type of behaviors, things that are abnormal to become normal because they have retreated out of fear, out of fear of being called a racist or a sexist, out of fear of being called a bigot, a homophobe. But you have to understand, we must speak the truth in love. The truth is the truth. No matter how you see it, no matter how you feel, the truth is the truth. And we must speak the truth. Otherwise, Christians are being replaced. They are being marginalized. See, it has started to switch. The marginalized are now starting to marginalize the majority. So in other words, people that are the smallest percentage of our population are the loudest and the most vocal. And they are pushing, they are pushing traditional values. They are pushing traditional families off the stage, off the platform. Because in the eyes of the Marxists, in the eyes of the cultural woke group, you cannot have traditional values and their values. Because they're all about power. They're all about control. They're all about dominance. It is demonic. I'm not saying the people are demonic. The spirit behind them is demonic. But you have to understand, we are not victims. We are empowered for greatness. The greater one lives inside of us. And we must speak that truth in love. This is intentional. It's all intentional to balkanize, to separate us into these different factions because once we are separated, we cannot come together as a country and as a people. This is intentional, everyone. They are doing this intentionally to separate intersectionality, to separate us, to separate, to segment us into different small little groups, small little pockets. Because when you're segmented into small little groups and small little pockets, you do not come together because you don't see yourself having a common interest with the other party. So I have my black people over here. I have my black people who are women over here. I have my black people who are women who are gay over here. And my black people who are men who are gay over here. And you have all these small little groups. And they're antagonistic towards each other. And so they're all splintered. We're all divided. And so therefore somebody can come in and assume power. And overthrow this country. And overthrow all the things that we have known to be true. All the things that we have known to be true are now considered false. And all the things that we've known to be false are now considered true. People are living their lives based on lies. They're living their lives based on emotions. The Bible says, walk in the spirit so you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What that says is that if you walk contrary to what God has placed in your spirit, you will live a life that's based on your emotions, that's based on your feelings. And we're not supposed to live that way. We're not. 
we are not supposed to live that way because emotions and feelings change. But if you make a decision while you are feeling a certain way, it can have long lasting ramifications. We are not victims. We are empowered for greatness and we must stand for biblical truth. We have to reject this cult of gender identity. We have to reject this religion of gender identity. We have to reject it. We have to reject this cultural Marxism that's looking to come in and assume power in our nation and in our families and in our communities. We are not victims. We are not victims. We are not victims, people. We're not. We walk in love. We speak the truth in love, but the truth is the truth no matter how you feel about it. The truth is the truth, no matter how you feel about it. And it's funny, they chose a football game, one of the symbols of Americana, one of the symbols of masculinity, to have this drag show at halftime. Just continuing to flip the roles, role reversal. Gender fluid, as they say. Flipping the roles. Men become women, women become men. Do you know how destructive that is? You know how confusing and what confusing that introduces? Do you know what that does? To a nation, to a people, to a family, to children? And they all do it in the name of representation. But my values are not being represented because my values are considered hostile. My values are considered antiquated. My values are considered caveman thinking. My values, biblical values, the values that have created this country, the values that have sustained this country, the values that have sustained the Western world. But no, they're considered antiquated. They're considered old. Traditional values are no longer in style, in vogue. They must be ushered out. It is demonic. It is cultural Marxism. And its attempt is to overthrow this country, to subvert America from within. But we are not victims. We are empowered for greatness. We will stand for biblical truth no matter what. We stand for biblical truth in love, understanding what people are, understanding feelings, understanding emotions, understanding that, understanding the history that the church has been hostile to the LGBT community, understanding that, understanding that. Rec but you can recognize wrongs of the past without acquiescing to wrongs of the present. You could recognize wrongs from the past without acquiescing to wrongs of the present. We are not victims. We are empowered for greatness.